The situation in Bangladesh is worsening despite Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina resigning and fleeing the country and the army chief calling for calm. The protests are still uncontrollable. The violence continues to spread. Lawmakers and media houses have been attacked while protesters occupy the Bangladeshi parliament building. Some stood atop an army tank on the streets of Dhaka. In Monday's protests, at least 56 people were killed, various buildings have been destroyed, and according to reports, some households with Hindu families were also attacked. A mob was seen approaching the Noakali Hindu temple. A large number of people broke the main gate of the police headquarters, storming the facility and vandalizing it. Now, according to sources, several Awami League officers came under attack. The Banga Bandu Memorial Museum in Dhaka's Dan Mondi was set on fire. With Hasina fleeing the country and coming to India, India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayshankar briefed Prime Minister Narendra Modi about the political turmoil in the neighboring country. Indian Prime Minister Modi held a high-level meeting with the Cabinet Committee on Security on the situation in Dhaka. India's border security forces have issued a high alert for its formations along the 4,096-kilometer India-Bangladesh border. Mr. Hush Vadhan Shringla is a former foreign secretary and ex-ambassador to Bangladesh. is now joining us live from New Delhi. Mr. Shringla, thank you very much for making time for us. We understand the demonstrations are still ongoing. The president of Bangladesh held a meeting with BNP leaders and defense chief a short while ago. What's your assessment of the events that have happened today in Bangladesh? Well, events have been very fast moving and we saw, uh, you know, the uh, culmination of the protests and demonstrations in the departure of uh, former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina from the country. Um, one would have thought that that should have brought the protest to an end because first the demand was for the removal of the quota system that would give youths more equal opportunities. Uh, then uh, the goalpost was changed to ask for a change in government and the ouster of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Having achieved both those objectives, I cannot understand why some of these elements are still there on the ground, pillaging and burning, and uh, there is no restoration of law and order. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, by all accounts, having achieved what they set out to do, uh, these elements should have returned. Uh, I would definitely say that the students' movement was a genuine one where uh, the students had uh, grievances and had issues that uh, uh, had to be raised, uh, you know, through protests. Mm. But I think uh, subsequently this was infiltrated by uh, political uh, elements, uh, by radical Islamist uh, elements. Mm -hmm. And I think that has vitiated the environment, resulted in violence, the deaths of many people. And it is those elements that are still on the ground, burning and looting and pillaging. And I think it's very important for the Chief of Army Staff of Bangladesh, who has assumed a charge of the country uh, through the imposition of martial law uh, and has talked about setting an interim administration to restore law and order, to ensure that there is peace and security, to, to protect the citizens of his own country, especially those of vulnerable uh, sections of the society, uh, and uh, to ensure that, uh, that essentially, uh, you know, uh, he starts a process which uh, which is conducive to the restoration of democracy in the country. Mr. All of these are very, very important. Mr. Ambassador, we'll talk about that interim government in a short while. But I want to, I want to ask you, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a meeting with his cabinet this evening. India being a close neighbor and having historical relationship with Bangladesh, what role can India play at this juncture? Well, as a close neighbor, uh, as a country that uh, 
uh, has worked uh, very closely with Bangladesh at all levels and who which has enjoyed the multifaceted relationship. It is not a, only a relationship between governments, but between people based on common uh, language, culture, ethnicities. And I think uh, here's where we can really make the difference that we can engage those who have assumed or filled in the vacuum today, power vacuum, assumed the leadership of the country and and uh, contribute constructively uh, to uh, the restoration of democracy in the country in a manner that is in the best interest of Bangladesh and those of its uh, its its neighbors and friends. So we can constructively engage this new dispensation. Uh, we should not allow the situation to deteriorate further and into a situation that again is either irretrievable or, or is inimical uh, to the interests of both Bangladesh and its people and India. For all the latest news, download the We on App and subscribe to our YouTube channel.